We're going to be solving algebraic equations in this video, and I want you to remember that the GED math skims over Algebra 1 very lightly. So, I'm going to have links in the description for the previous videos for this Lesson 19, along with some Algebra 1 videos that will really help you when you try to take the GED test. Algebra word problems tell us the relationship between numbers in a situation. We change the words into algebraic symbols, write an equation, and then solve it. You should check it too. We use variables to represent unknown amounts. And remember, a variable is just a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. We use clue words to tell us which operation to use or how to group the amounts. We make sure to answer the exact question that was asked in the problem. Now I want you to remember that when you see a lone variable like x, there's an invisible one in front of it. Any variable, there's an invisible one in front of it. So if we have 5x minus 4x, then we're just going to write x. We don't write the 1. And if we have 5x minus 6x, well, that's taking away more than 5, isn't it? It's going to put us into the negative. We're going to have a negative x. We don't write the 1, OK? And we can find any consecutive numbers that have a total. We have four numbers here. They're consecutive. They go in order 20, 21, 22, 23. Those are consecutive numbers, OK? One after the other. We represent the 20 as x. 21 is 1 more than 20, so we're going to call it x plus 1. 22 is 2 more than 20, so we're going to call it x plus 2. 23 is 3 more than 20, so we're going to call it x plus 3. We use x as the first number, x plus 1 is the next number, x plus 2 is the third number, etc., so on. The total of three consecutive numbers is 48. What are the numbers? Well, we have three numbers, so we're going to have the first one is x, the second one is x plus 1, and the third one is x plus 2, and it equals 48. We can combine the like terms. We have x, x, and x. That gives us 3x. We have a 1 and a 2. When we combine them, we get a 3, and they equal 48. We need to get rid of the 3 from the left side. We need to create a 0 pair here, so we add a negative 3 to both sides of the equation. Whatever you do to this side, you have to do to that side of the equal sign. Now this is eliminated, plus 3 minus 3 makes a 0, so we have 3x equals 45. We divide both sides by this coefficient 3. And the reason we're doing that is because 3x is multiplication, it's 3 times this number. To do the inverse of multiplication, we do division, and we divide it by this coefficient 3. That's going to create a 1, same numerator and denominator, isn't it? So we have 1x. 45 divided by 3 is 15, so we know x is 15, so x plus 1 is 16, and x plus 2 is 17. There's our three numbers, and they total 48. The total of two consecutive numbers is 309. We have two numbers that are consecutive, so we have x plus x plus 1 equals 309. We combine the like terms, so we have 2x plus 1 equals 309. We need to get rid of this 1, because our goal is to get this x by itself. So we add a negative 1 to both sides of the equal sign. That eliminates this, gives us 2x equals 308. We divide both sides by this coefficient 2. Same numerator and denominator gives us a 1x, and it's going to equal 154. So x plus 1 must be 155, and those are our two consecutive numbers that total 309. The total of two consecutive odd numbers is 236. Now, Odd numbers skip that even number. So instead of saying x plus x plus 1, we're skipping that x plus 1 and going directly to x plus 2 to skip that even number in between them. We combine the like terms just like we did before, and we get 2x plus 2 equals 236. We need to get this x by itself, so we need to get rid of this 2 from this side. So we add a negative 2 to both sides of the equal sign. That's going to eliminate this as a zero pair, and we're going to have 2x equals 234. We divide both sides by this coefficient 2 to make a 1x. 234 divided by 2 is 117, and x plus 2, 117 plus 2 would be 119. Those are two consecutive odd numbers that equal 236. All right? Now, this is going to get really wordy. So if you have to go back and go back to minute 445 or whatever of this video, which is where we're starting here, and watch this again, it's no big deal, okay? 
Emma's uncle is three times and four years older than she is now. Seven years ago, he was 12 times older than she was then. How old is Emma now? So you have to pay attention to the thens and the nows, okay? So we're going to let E equal Emma's age now. E minus 7 is her age seven years ago. That makes sense, right? This is her now, and her, and her seven years ago would be minus 7. Well, it says that her uncle is three times and four years older. So that's three times plus four than she is now. Well, Emma now is an E. So three times E would be three times older, plus four would be plus the four years older now. So that's her uncle's age now, 3E plus 4. To say 7 years ago, we need to add a minus 7 to the back of this, don't we? We also have to remember that he was 12 times older then. So this E minus 7 was her age 7 years ago. His age equaled 12 times this, okay? So we can say 12 times that age of her 7 years ago would be 12 times E minus 7. We put this in parentheses because you have to multiply it by 12. His age now is 3 times her age plus 4, but 7 years ago would be minus 7, right? We figured that? So now we can combine like terms. And we can distribute this 12 into the parentheses. 12 times e is 12e, and 12 times a negative 7 is a negative 84. We can combine these two like terms here. Plus 4 minus 7 makes a negative 3. We need to combine the like terms in some way to isolate this e, don't we? So because we have an equal sign here, we can get rid of this 3e by adding a negative 3e to both sides of the equation. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it, and we'll just end up with a negative 3 on this side. When we add the negative 3e to this side, we get a 9e. We drop the minus 84. So now we have 9e minus 84 equals negative 3. We can get rid of this negative 84 by adding 84 to each side of the equation. That'll create a zero pair here. We end up with 9e equals 81. Now we can divide both sides of the equation by this 9 coefficient, and that's going to be 9 over 9. That's going to give us a 1, isn't it? The 81 divided by 9 is a 9. So we know Emma is now 9 years old. So e minus 7 would be 2, wouldn't it? And he's 3 times her age now plus 4. That's 3 times 9 is 27 plus 4. That means he's 31 years old now. Now what did it ask? How old is Emma now is the question that we need to answer. How old is Emma now? She's 9. Now we could continue on and figure out her age 7 years ago was 2, because 9 minus 7 is 2. And if he's 31 and we subtract 7, that means he was 24 back then. Was he 12 times older than she was back then? Well, if she was 2 and he was 24, yeah, he was 12 times older. So we know she's 9 and it works, okay? So if you have to go back to that beginning of this problem and watch it again, that's okay, all right? No big deal. Go back to minute 445 or 448, okay? Now, it's really important to be able to decipher these because there's going to be a couple problems like this on the test. And if you just skip this and say, it's too hard, I'm going to go on to the next lesson and hope that I can pass the test without doing these, you're just hurting yourself, all right? So check this one out. It says, Jan is four times as old as her son. Immediately start thinking, what would that be? Four times as old as her son. So it's saying that's what she is now. So was her son six and she's 24? Is her son seven and she's 28? And think that in your head. And it says, in four years, she'll only be three times as old as her son. So try to figure out what two numbers would fit that, okay? And the question it's asking is, how old will her son be in four years? So it's not asking what his age is now. It wants to know in four years. So that's what has to be answered. So don't let it trick you. Don't answer his age now. It wants to know his age in four years, all right? So we're going to let the son, his age now, just be an S, if she's four times his age, then she's 4S, isn't she? In four years, he's going to be S plus 4, and in four years, she's going to be 4S plus 4. So we have our equation. 4S plus 4 equals three times her son's age in four years. We can distribute this 3 into the parentheses. 3S 
plus 12. Now we need to get rid of this 3s from this side of the equation because we only want the s on one side. We're trying to isolate that s to solve for s. We add a negative 3s to both sides. That creates a zero pair here. It's eliminated. We only have 12 on this side. And 4s minus 3s just gives us a 1s. See? We don't have to write the 1. So we have s plus 4. We want to get the s by itself. So we're going to add a negative 4 to both sides of the equation. And we get s equals 8. Now, that means that's his age now, but that's not what it wanted, was it? It wants to know how old her son will be in four years. So the correct answer would be 12, wouldn't it? To check our numbers, she's supposed to be four times older than him. So if he's eight right now, then that means she's 32 right now. Her son's age in four years would be 12. In four years, she'd be 36. Yes, that means she's three times older it says in four years she's only going to be three times as old. So that works. These numbers work. So what is his age in four years? That was what it was asking. The answer is 12. So don't let it trick you. If eight is one of the options, you have to really read the question and answer exactly what it's asking. Okay? Now here's another one that's going to seem a little confusing, but if you break it down into little parts, it's not so bad. The sum of 10 and twice a certain number is 30 more than the number. What is the number? Sounds confusing? Break it into little parts. The sum, okay, that means we're doing addition, of 10 and twice a certain number. Twice a certain number would be two times that number, wouldn't it? So we have the sum of 10 and 2x. You could say even 2n if you wanted to. And it's going to equal 30 more than that number, 30 plus x. So we have our equation. So the is means equals. See that? We need to get rid of the x from the right side. So we're going to add a negative x here and a negative x here. That's going to create a zero pair and eliminate it. So we only have 30 on this side. And 2x minus 1x is just an x. So we have 10 plus x equals 30. We have to get rid of this 10 from this side. So the x is by itself. So we add a negative 10, add a negative 10, and we get that x equals 20. So our number, what is the number? The number is 20, okay? So break the algebraic word problem into small sections to decipher its meaning section by section. And you can watch my algebra word problem playlist. That will help you figure out word problems and see how to write them. And I have videos on clue words and how to write an equation using the clue words. And learn to identify and decipher those clue words. You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 227. And remember, to pass this GED math test, you have to be able to change words into equations because there's a lot of word problems. You also have to understand graphs. Our next lesson is going to be using distance and cost formulas. It's lesson 19E. So it didn't go over these equations very long, did it? It jumped right into these formulas. So watch the algebra word problem playlist. Watch as many of the videos as you can. Write these down. You can pause the video. Write these down and watch these videos before you go forward so that you really understand the concept of writing these equations and using these clue words, all right? And then come back to this one or then go to the next one. Or you can come back and watch this one again and see if it makes more sense after watching these, okay? Don't rush yourself. Try to do this as methodically as possible. The book is going to rush you. Don't let it, okay? Watch these little side videos and thoroughly understand it, and you will definitely pass the test, okay? So it's up to you how much you're going to use extra information to help yourself, all right? I really believe in you, and I think if you try that you'll be able to do it. So I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next video. Bye.